I have already created a drum pattern, which includes my choice of kick drum. Now I need to create an instance of Ableton's Spectrum plugin for some frequency analysis. I only want to monitor the kick's output so I can visually identify the key of the kick's strongest peak in the sub bass area. I can do this by either dropping the spectrum onto the specific drum rack pad for the kick or onto the drum rack's entire output and then solo the drum pad for the kick. The sub area of the frequency spectrum is below 100 Hz, so I'm looking for a large peak below there. If I look at the position readout near the bottom left hand corner of the analyzer display, it will show the nearest musical note for the frequency my cursor is positioned over. I can make the display larger by double clicking it and resizing it for easier viewing. Now I can use this information to have the static sub bass line at the same sub frequency as the kick. Here I can see a large peak around this point. It looks quite wide. If I move my cursor around the area of the peak, it's wide enough for a few musical notes. Also, the sub in the kick is most likely moving down in pitch as it plays, so I need to find where it starts. This can be done by using a steep bandpass filter and a set of headphones to find the clear musical note at the start of the kick in the sub area. The reason I'm using headphones is because of the room I'm in. It will start vibrating at certain sub-frequencies due to it being acoustically untreated. While this might sound good at the time in the current room, it's not necessarily going to sound that way in other rooms. So using headphones lets me hear the sub-sounds as clearly as I can without hearing the room react to them. I'll add an Ableton Auto Filter plugin, set to bandpass mode before the spectrum, setting the resonance quite high and watching while listening will help me line up the center frequency of the filter with the kick's sub bass peak. Turn the channel fader down a bit too, as using the filter will raise the level and distort Ableton's output, which can make it hard to hear the true peak in the kick's sub energy. Now, while listening for the clearest sounding notes I can hear at the beginning of each kick, the spectrum will then let me know what this note is. In this case, the sub bass pitch of the kick is C sharp 1. I'm going to create a 1 bar sine wave bass in key with the kick at C sharp 1. As I have the Ableton Suite package, I will use the Ableton Analog Virtual Instrument. You can create the same sound with any basic virtual synthesizer that allows you to select a sine wave as your oscillator type. The key of the kick is C sharp 1, so I will draw a note in to play this in a new blank MIDI clip. Make sure the length of the note is at least 4 bars, so if I choose to have a punchy start to the bass sound later, I won't be hearing every bar while I change my settings. Setting the amplifier's ADSR to full sustain with a short attack and release will create a constant sub bass volume. So far, I have created a constant sub bass note in key with the kick's sub bass energy peak. I can show this by adding a spectrum to the master output while only the kick and the sub bass play. Keep an eye on the 70 Hz area as this is where I've decided the bass and the kick have their main sub bass energy. Next I will show you how to use the Ableton compressor to precisely control the volume of the sub bass in relation to the kick drum's rhythm. I'll drag an instance of the compressor plugin to the output of the sub bass sound source. In this case, the analog's audio output. In order to change the volume of the sub bass in time with the rhythm of the kick pattern, I'll click the sidechain toggle button to show the sidechain options, turn on the external sidechain button and select my kick as the source from the drop down menu. First, selecting the drums drum rack channel, then selecting the kick from the second menu. Notice how I'm choosing the pre-effects option from the pre-effects, post-effects or post-mixer options that I have. This means that the signal routed 
to my external sidechain will be before any changes I might make later to the kick with additional effects or any volume adjustments made with the drum rack's internal mixer. For the compressor's fastest response time to each kick drum played, I'll set its envelope to peak, meaning it will respond quickly to the first peak of each kick. Then I'll set the threshold quite low to react immediately to the kick, the ratio to around 4, and select FF1 for the feed type option to eliminate the chance of clicks in the audio while compression happens. If you listen to FF2, you can hear it popping on the current setting. The FB option isn't available when using side chaining, so I can't choose this. Setting up the knee option can also help to eliminate any unwanted clicks, but at the same time reduces the response speed of the compressor. And I want it to be as fast as possible. As the threshold is very low, and the ratio is reasonably high, the amount of level reduction on the sub is quite severe. But this is good as I can hear the start and end of the volume changing very clearly. I can reduce the amount of volume reduction later once I'm happy with the speed of the settings. The main settings to tweak here are the attack and release values. The attack controls how fast the volume is reduced after the kick starts to play and the release is how long the sound will take to return to its normal volume after the kick plays. The attack control generally wants to be as quick as possible so it dips the volume of the sub bass instantly once the kick has started. However, the values we're looking at for the left half of the attack dial are only a few milliseconds, so you can afford to move this around a little to try and minimize any clicking noises that might occur. You can leave the look ahead settings to zero as you will not gain any noticeable difference by changing its settings in this technique. The release time is the really creative element for this technique as its setting can change the feel of the sub bass as it controls the timing of the subs rise back to full volume in between each kick. If the release is too long, the sub will not have time to return to full volume before the next kick drum plays. As a result, it will constantly stay at the lower volume until the kicks stop playing or happen less frequently. So anywhere between it being too slow and too fast to get back to full volume is the play area to choose from. I'm going to set my compressor to a short release time so it's long enough to lower the volume of the sub bass while the main body of the kick is playing but quickly returns to full volume afterwards. This will make it hard to even hear any volume reduction during the kick's duration, but technically will stop additional peaks from the sub bass and the kick playing together at the same time. Lowering the ratio will decrease the amount of volume reduction. I will go into examples of these settings in context in part 2 of this tuition series, layered and filter sidechaining.